What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Here is another video we're going to be touching on Gray Zone, but we're basically going to be talking about the overall market that is gaming and the opportunity that Gray Zone has when it comes to this topic. So, the first thing I kind of want to absolutely put in focus is the retention of the human race in modern society today. Most everybody has some form of a TikTok brain. They scroll, they move on to the next show, they try to get a small hit of dopamine, they don't go outside much, they don't work out. All they do to find happiness is to watch others or to play. It's getting bad and it's a topic for another day, but I truly see it as a major key in the downfall of our civilization. Take it back to the early 2000s. I don't see people today having the patience to stand in line at a midnight release of Call of Duty without trying to kill one another or somebody being offended by XYZ. We're at a crazy state in humanity right now. But again, that's a topic for another day, but it does relate. So the ruthless behavior of gamers today, when it comes from a development standpoint, I'm not a developer, but I can understand how it must be extremely hard to deal with. The slightest slip up, whether it's how the announcement of a delay comes, different marketing strategies that fail, updates, different things like that. I can see how one wrong move can cause a lot of anxiety inside the development team. So the delay of Grey Zone Warfare being done by a tweet by Mara. Some people, not all, get upset about this. They think they have to have some special announcement, some magical thing that's clear and concise. And I understand that that might be the more professional route, but nobody's perfect. These are indie developers doing their first PC game, right? Mara, along with probably a lot of them, they have no idea the type of eyes that are on them already in this type of genre. So to make conversation and leak things or reveal things, make people happy, make people upset, it's going to happen. They're human. But for most people, it doesn't matter. Most people aren't watching the comments of Mara's Twitter. Most people aren't in the GZW Discord watching every message that comes across. The few that are worried about this, and yes, I hope this kind of pisses you off. Get outside, man. Touch some grass, relax. Everything's going to be fine. I need to check out the description. I'm also going to put a link up here. Make sure you join our Discord. We're a collective group of FPS gamers that love these types of genres. Realistic tactical FPSs like Tarkov, Arma, Ready or Not, Squad, fill in the blank. Solid group of guys so far, and I'm extending the invitation to you. We'd be glad to have you. So let's talk about the delay and my opinion on it. This is just an opinion, guys. I am not in the know. I'm just like many of you. Just an opinion. From the little that I've had the privilege of seeing, these developers are OCD, very articulate about how they're developing their game. They care a lot. It is truly a passion project. So I don't know if it was, if it's server issues, timing with Steam, or producing the game, all the legal stuff. I have no idea. But if I had to guess, I I just think they're trying to truly iron it out, truly get it in a state that's going to be a solid early access. That being said, it is still an early access game. And I see a lot of people comparing it still to Tarkov, to these other games that have had a decade or more lead on Madfinger games and Grayzone Warfare. It's unfair, but it's going to happen. Life's not fair, right? So if you are watching this video, I want you to cool your expectations a little bit and let's just see what they have to offer. They've already said it's going to span several years of developing the game and we're going to get to be brought along for the ride. So that's an opportunity and something that we should be appreciative of, given the timing and everything going on with this specific type of FPS. Lastly, let's talk about that a little bit. The opportunity that Grayzone Warfare has, I believe, is solid. Good opportunity to present something to this type of genre that we have not seen yet. With everything that's going on with Escape from Tarkov and all the mess that's going on with that, whether you love it or hate it, they're a solid game. They have a lot of concurrent players. They make a lot of money, right? Arena kind of flopped. They took focus off of their main game. And quite frankly, in my opinion, they've gotten lazy. And a lot of people are recognizing that with their cheaters and things like that. Now, does that mean that Grey Zone is going to pull all of the players from Tarkov or all of the players from this game or that game? No. But I think there are some people that want it. There are some people that are interested in it. It's clear. So timing the release of Early Act Access alongside this dull moment right now, I think is important. So one word of advice to the developers, and again, I'm nobody, so they do not have to take it. I hope someone is in their ear already kind of mentioning it, but the retention and the timing of releasing sooner rather than later is important. I want to touch on a game real quick that was near and dear to my heart that I saw completely flop, even though it was a solid game. The game was called Super People. They had 1.8 million players 
play their open beta. They then do a stream immediately after the beta ended. This is going to show firsthand about retention, guys. They do a live stream. Thousands of people join and watch because they said they were going to announce the release date. And I cannot remember how long it was, but I want to say it was three or four months from the time that we got to play a solid beta, very well put together game, a dull moment in the genre of battle royales, and they waited and waited and waited and launched it around the same week that Warzone 2 came out. If I remember right, they couldn't break even 20,000 players. About 1%, less than 1% of the open beta players. So why did the beta pop off? Dull moment in the genre. Why didn't the game pop off and bring back even remotely those numbers? Warzone 2, other games, retention. So if any developers are watching this, I hope you consider the moment that we're in with Escape from Tarkov. There's already been these other games, right? Direct Contact, Project Leet, Loot, whatever the hell it is. These little scams popping up, trying to piggyback off of what you guys are doing. You know why? Because it's a dull moment in the genre. So with the delay and any type of announcements we may get, in the coming weeks and months. I hope it's not pushed too far because the next big and beautiful thing may be coming without us knowing and it may release right alongside the time that you actually want to release early access. And like I've seen firsthand, it can kill your game. A lot of people say only the developers can kill a game. Only what they do can kill it. Yeah, that's mostly it. There is an X factor of timing and competition. And it is very much a possibility that other games can kill games based on scheduled releases, updates, so on and so forth. So that's all I have for this video, guys. I know it touched on a few different things, but I hope you all enjoyed it nonetheless. And I hope we can catch you in the collective. Make sure you join the Discord. Solid group of guys in there so far. Been playing with almost everybody. It's been a lot of fun. Been playing different games like Ready or Not, Squad, Tarkov, things like that. So it's rumored that raw footage is coming, we believe Monday. But nonetheless, I think this week's gonna be entertaining. So make sure y'all tune into that when they release it. Stay updated with their Discord, YouTube, and their Twitter. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you haven't. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them. Let me know what you think about Grey's on Warfare. That's it for now. I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.